this video we're going to see how to create a form using bootstrap we're going to create a new post route and give it a name then we will call the new route from the form we are going to see what is CSRF or cross-site request forgery we're going to add a CSRF token to our form and we are going to check the request parameters sent from the form okay so the first thing to do is to create a new form so I'm going to open our project here we are and we have in resources views we have our contact page so here we have to add a new form right so let's go to bootstrap and we're going to search for I'm sorry bootstrap form here we are and here we have an overview or an example so I'm going to copy this and paste it on our contact page and see how it looks like let's serve our application PHP artisan serve okay let's try this out call host and if we go to contact page here we have our form as we are using bootstrap as we saw in the last video this is using bootstrap as well so here we have an email address and a password so in the next few minutes we're going to change this let's go back to our list and now we have a form and we have to add fields using bootstrap okay so for example for a contact form we can use uh, a name from the user a of course an email a subject and a text which is going to be the inquiry right so let's add this I'm going to take the password away and the check as well okay so first of all we need to look for I'm going to rearrange this okay I'm going to add a text field I'm going to use div class form group as we are using bootstrap I'm going to copy this and we have name name and here this is type text an ID of name and name in this case is name 2 so we don't have a describe section for example here we want to keep this for the email field but not for any other field so I'm going to erase this and for a placeholder for example enter name so let's see if this works
great. We have a name field and an email address field. So we have to add a subject, which is going to be another text field and a text area. So for example, this is subject. This is text as well, name, we're going to use subject, and for the ID too. And for the placeholder, of course, enter subject. And the same for the message, okay? Let's see how it looks. Okay, now we have our name, email, subject, and message. So take a look at this. Maybe we want a large field for the message. So if you go into Bootstrap page, we have an example text area. So I'm going to grab this which is the code for the text area and we're going to replace this code so now we have again message name message and id message and I'm going to leave this with three rows. So let's see how it goes. Great. Now we have a bigger area to write our message and we can resize it from here. Okay. So now we have our bootstrap form and now I have to create a new post route and name it. This is because we have a form here and we to send the information in this form we need to make a post request so the action of this form would be post and we need to put a link to send this information so this would be the sorry method post and the link would be action so for example we could create a new route called contact slash submit okay so now we have to create a new route we're going to route web.php and I'm going to create a new post route which is going to be contact slash submit okay so let's try this out for example with an ok message This is saved. So let's see how this goes. Okay, I'm going to submit the form. And we have an error. This is a security error. And as you can see here, we are going to see what is CSRF and add a CSRF token to our form. So now I have created a new route called the new route from the form. And we are going to see what is CSRF. So let's go to uh, Laravel CSRF. And 
and here you can see that Laravel makes it easy to protect your application from cross-site request forgery attacks, which is sorry, which are a type of malicious exploit whereby unauthorized comments are performed on behalf of an authenticated user. Okay, you can read more of CSRF if you want. So to prevent this, we only have to add this directive within our form. So let's do this here. And if we test our form again, great, now it works. Of course, we are testing this and it's working okay, but it throws us a warning that this will throw an error in a future version of PHP. So let's change this for, for example, one, two, three. I think this would be the same thing. No, okay, it works. Okay, so behind the scenes, we have if we inspect the source code, we should see here in our form this variable input type hidden, so we are not seeing it. The name is token and we have a value. So this is the same as at CSRF. We can put an input hidden variable here or just call this magic method from Laravel Blade Directive, okay? Great, so we saw what is CSRF and added a CSRF token to our form. Now, for example, we can name our routes okay let's see here we can give this route a name take a look at this we can search for laravel routes and here we have a section called named routes so it says named routes allow the convenient generation of URLs or redirects for specific routes. And you may specify a name for a route by changing the name method onto the route definition. So let's do that here. For example, name contact form submit. Now, we don't have to remember all of our application routes. So instead of putting contact slash submit here, we can call the name of the route. So everything, every variable that you're putting here in the blade files should be between double curled braces like this and now we can call the route function and just said contact form submit let's save this this is saved and if we refresh the page here and in inspect the code again you can see that the action is actually contact slash submit. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's a more clean way to do it. And of course it works and it helps you to organize your code because if you change for some reason, this route, for example, to this, you don't have to search for contact slash submit on every form you use it because you are calling it for the name. 
so this helps you in your development okay let's go back so maybe you should name all of your routes okay I'm going to do this now so this would be home this would be contact and this would be about of course okay great and you can see that it is working as well so let's check this out again and now we have to see if we are getting our parameters in this instance okay so as you can see here we're sending a name email address subject and message that's why we added the name attribute here so if we go to our routes file again here we can return a request all so what is this request is a global variable that you have here in Laravel that contains all of the request information that you are receiving from the page that's calling this route okay so here we are receiving a request from our contact form and I'm going to show all of its parameters let's see if this works and now we have as a JSON form we have our token our name subject and message so we don't have the email here I think that's because we don't added a name yeah I didn't change this and the name attribute oh sorry we have to refresh the form and now we have our email there is a nicer way to see this and it is with the TT function which stands for dump and die so this will dump the request all variable and then kill the application and now we see it as an array okay so this is a cleaner way we have a name email subject and message and if we add data to it for example john doe john at doe.com this is the subject hello this is a test message so let's submit this and here we have our data so indeed we are receiving our data so let's check this item out so that's it for today thank you very much for watching guys Thank you.